In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your macOS system for Java development. Now, one of the very first things that we need to do is install a JDK. I'm going to show you how to find the JDK on the Oracle website and download it, and then we'll proceed with the installation step. So I'm going to jump over to my computer now and show you exactly how to install the JDK on macOS. Now, the first thing we want to do is open up a browser. Safari is perfectly fine. If you prefer to use Chrome or Firefox, you can do that also. And I'm just going to search Google for Oracle JDK 11. And you can see here, I got the Java SE development kit. This is exactly what we want. So I'm going to click on that link. And here you can see this is the downloads for it. And we want to grab this Mac OS. I like the DMG version and that makes things a little easier. So I'm going to Come in that, and of course you need to accept the license agreement. And here you are required to log into Oracle. So if you don't have an account, uh, you need to create one here. I do have an account, so I'm going to go through that process. And here Safari is asking me uh, to allow the download. I'm going to say allow it. And I can see in the bottom of the screen, uh, this file is now downloading from Oracle from the Oracle site. When that is complete, we will be able to go in and start the install process. Once we have the Java installer downloaded to our system, we need to run it and have it install the Java JDK on our system. Okay, I can see the disk image downloaded here. I'm just going to click on downloads and click on that to open it. You can see that Mac OS is going ahead and opening up that disk image. And I just need to double click on the installer package. And you can see here's a pretty standard Mac OS installer. So I'm just going to say continue here and really no options there. Just go through and say install. You are going to have to give it your password. So this is going to make system level changes. And it takes a, just a moment or two to go out and install all the files. Uh, it says install succeeded. I am going to close that. And I'm going to go ahead and move that installer to the trash because we, we just don't need it anymore. Now there's one additional thing that we need to configure, and that is to set up the Java Home. Some Java applications look for an environment variable called Java Home. And what we need to do is add this to your profile uh, from the command line. And if you come up here to about this Mac, if you are running mac os catalina or higher they switched over to z shell from bash and catalina so there's two different ways that we need to account for here so i'm going to open up the terminal and if you do echo echo dollar sign shell you can see here that i have zsh and that means that i need to uh, handle the instructions for zsh if you are still on the bash shell what you want to do is a VI from your home directory bash underscore profile. So this is only if you get bash back from that, not ZSH. So that's the Z shell. Here what we want to do is VI, the file name is ZSHRC. So I'm going to use the VI editor for this. If you have a different text editor uh, that you're comfortable with, go ahead and use that. I prefer VI personally. So this is a new file. You might have a profile there already. And again, if you are using the bash shell, you want to be editing dot bash underscore profile here. So I'm going to hit I for insert. And we want to do export Java underscore home equals. And here we're going to do dollar sign, open paren, and we are going to run a command for it. USR L-I-B-E x ec lib exec and we are going to say java underscore home then we need to do a close paren and that that sets up that environment variable and just recently under java 11 that they did add in this exec which gives us the path to the java home and previous versions of java did not have this so now to save this i'm going to hit escape colon WQ and that is the VI command to write and quit. And now I'm going to exit this, close this, and 
I'm ask, asking for a new Java shell. And here I can say echo dollar sign Java underscore home. And that, that is the path to the Java home. So uh, we need to get that environment variable set up. And now at this point in time, Java is completely installed under Mac OS. Now, once Java is installed on our system, it should be available for our use. I'm going to show you from the command line how we can verify that we do have the JDK installed properly and it's working. There are two Java commands that we can use from the command line. One is Java, just simple uh, Java, and we are going to use minus V to get the version of it. And that will tell us that the Java executable is available on our command line on our path. So it tells us that Java is installed. The other command is Java C. So a Java with a C at the end, this is the Java compiler and do a Java C minus V for the version of it. That will tell us that the Java compiler is installed. It's a, a pretty easy mistake to make to install just the Java runtime, the JRE and not the JDK. And if you have installed just the JRE, if you do Java C, you will get an error saying that Java C is not found. But if you've properly installed the Java JDK, Java C will exist and you'll get output from that. So by using Java, Java C minus V, that tells us the version of the Java compiler installed on the system. Now to verify that Java is properly installed, open up the command line in the terminal application. And what you want to do is Java minus version. I think in the intro video I said V, but it's actually version. So now I run that, and this is actually calling the, the Java runtime, and we can see that this is the Java installed, so I have 11.05 installed. So now I know that the Java runtime is installed properly, and to verify that the compiler is installed, I'm going to do Java C minus version. So that tells me that uh, the Java compiler is also installed, which tells me that the JDK has been properly installed. So very easy mistake to make. Uh, to install runtime and not the JDK. As long as you get that Java C coming back, you know that that is installed. If you were to do foo version, and this is something that's not installed, you can see that the command is not found. So if Java C was not installed, we'd get the command not found like I just did there for foo. Now that we have Java installed and have verified that it's installed properly, we want to go out and get the IntelliJ IDE. This is freely available from JetBrains, so we have to go out to the JetBrains site and download it to our, our computer system here. And uh, for the purposes of this, I am going to be using the uh, IntelliJ Community Edition. So if you're a beginning Java developer, the Community Edition is perfectly fine, and that's what we are going to go out and grab from the JetBrains site and download to our computer. Now to download IntelliJ, we want to go back to Safari, and I am going to do IntelliJ Mac OS. And we can see here the top result is going to be the download IntelliJ. So I'm going to click on that link. And here we have two options. You can close the cookies window, not really needed. Uh, we have the ultimate edition and the community edition. Again, for beginning Java developers, the community edition is uh, perfectly fine. So I'm just going to click on download. And we can see here that Safari is asking me to allow downloads. I'm going to say allow. And that's going to take a, a few moments to download from JetBrains website. Now that the download is complete, we can run the installer, which is going to install IntelliJ onto our computer system here so that we can start using it. Okay, after the download completes, you'll find it down here under downloads. And we just want to click on the disk image there. See, so it takes a second to open this up. And installation of IntelliJ is very simple. We just uh, grab this icon, drag and drop it over to Applications. And after a moment, IntelliJ will copy its contents over. And when that is complete, one thing I like to do is come up here to Applications, double click on that, and we'll find it in here. See there's IntelliJ IDE CE for Community Edition. And I like to come in here and uh, drag it down to the dock. We'll put that next to Safari, and that will make it easily accessible. So I can close that, close that, and one thing we want to do is come up to Finder, and we can unmount that disk image.
Just click on that and then close Finder. Now, the first time that you run IntelliJ, it's going to come up and ask you some questions about how to set it up for your configuration. I'm going to go through now and show you uh, some commonly selected stuff, uh, some, some things you probably won't need, and we'll just go st uh, step through the uh, menu of options and get IntelliJ configured for your use. So to launch IntelliJ from the launch bar, just double click, and it'll take a moment for it to start up. You can see the icon is bouncing. It goes through a verification. The first time you won't see this uh, after you run it more than once. So it goes through and verifies it. And now it's saying, hey, I downloaded this. Again, this is only going to be for the first time. So I'll go ahead and say open that as a signed artifact, knowing that it is from IntelliJ. And we can see that it's asking me for notifications. I'm going to allow that. And here, if you've been using IntelliJ, you could bring over settings. In this case, it's a, a brand new install, so I'm not going to bring over any settings. I say OK. And we get to agree to the privacy policy to keep the lawyers happy. And I normally do send uh, usage statistics. Helps uh, JetBrains develop a product by allowing people what they're actually using. I prefer the Darkula theme. Uh, if you prefer the light theme, you can do that. And of course, you can change these later too. So now it's asking if you want to create a launcher script and say yes. Now we have some default plugins and I like to go through these and just enable what I'm going to be using. And by doing this, it helps uh, the foot memory footprint on IntelliJ. So if you're not going to be using things uh, best to leave them disabled. It makes the application a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to come through here and show you some of my typical selections. So I'm going to come under build tools. I haven't used Ant in forever, but I do switch back and forth between Maven and Gradle quite often. Version control, uh, Git, GitHub, never use that guy, and I haven't used Subversion for a very long time. Uh, if you are using Subversion, uh, leave these uh, clicked. Test tools, uh, a lot of people still like TestNG. I uh, just have not been using it much lately. I, I prefer JUnit myself. So I'm gonna save these. We don't need the Swing Designer. I'm not going to be doing Android development. Let's see here. I'm going to leave all these. And these are all nice tools. So bytecode, task management, that's a nice little thing. You can leave to-dos in your code, code and whatnot. Eclipse, I do not need Eclipse interoperability. So I'm going to save those changes. And then the plugin development kit. This is going to be if you're going to be developing plugins for IntelliJ and I am not going to be doing that, so <laughs> disable that. Featured plugins. Here, if you are doing Scala, uh, Idea Vim, uh, Vim Editor, and Features Trainer, I don't need any of those, so I am just gonna uh, say, start using uh, IntelliJ. Just click this button at the bottom here. And this is for the installation of that script. And now IntelliJ is starting up for the first time. And what we can do is uh, create a new project. And now it's going to go through the project window. If you were to have the IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, you'd have more options here. We well, do not. So I'm just going to go through and create our very first Java project. I'm going to say click Next here. Next. And I'm going to say Test Project. And you can see here, it comes up to your user home idea projects. I usually like to just start a, a simple folder called source uh, SRC and store everything in there. You probably have your own workflow about where you'd like to store things, but a good idea to do it off your home directory. And that's what that little squiggly line, the tilde means for the home. So I'm just going to click finish here and it'll take IntelliJ a moment to initialize the project. But at this point, IntelliJ is now ready to go for Java development.